AI's dirty secret. It's just as biased as we are. Originally published October 20th, 2024 by Paul O'Flaherty on pauloflaherty.com. AI, artificial intelligence, is biased because we are. It's trained on data created by, curated by, and endorsed by us people. And unfortunately, no matter our best intentions, we are all biased in one way or another. We can't help it. We can and should work to fix our biases, but Avenue Q was right. Everyone's a little bit racist, sexist, insert bias here, ist. Elizabeth Laraki ran into this problem when she saw a promo picture of herself that appeared to have been altered to make it a bit more sexy. Opening buttons and showing a peak of Brad that wasn't in the headshot she'd sent to the conference organizers. Quote, he quickly reports back that the woman running their social media used a cropped square image from their website. She needed it to be more vertical, so she used an AI expand image tool to make the photo taller. AI invented the bottom part of the image, in which it believed that women's shirts should be unbuttoned further, with some tension around the buttons and revealing a little hint of something underneath." End quote. There's an image linked in the show notes showing the original cropped AI-filled image. A 2023 post from IBM lists 10 different reasons why AI might display or develop biases. They are algorithm bias, cognitive bias, confirmation bias, exclusion bias, measurement bias, outgroup homogeneity bias, prejudice bias, recall bias, sample or selection bias, and finally stereotyping bias. Given all of these potential ways that AI can be biased and influenced from inception, it's amazing that we have any trust in it at all. Cognitive bias and confirmation bias are very interesting to me because some of it is caused by the inputs of us human meat sacks when using the AI. Every AI I have used so far, whether it's ChatGPT, Copilot, Google Gemini or something else has a little thumbs up and a little thumbs down at the end of every response. It's the AI's way of getting quick training data. Was it a good response or was it a poor response? Smash that thumbs up button. Those little thumbs are the vehicle for confirmation or, to my mind, endorsement bias. If I keep thumbing up the answers that I like rather than the factually correct answers, then the algorithm will be trained that the answers I thumb up are likely the most correct. As a single user, my thumbing up of responses may have a negligible impact, as it would be overruled by the large number of other users thumbing up the correct responses. But when it comes to AI image or video generation, we forget the one important factor. For every person that creates a banner for their blog post, fakes an image of a politician doing something nice, or generates an image of a kitten frolicking with unicorns, there are legions of horny teenagers and basement-dwelling adults spending countless hours running countless iterations of prompts trying to get the AI to output even the merest hint of a breast or genitalia. If you don't believe me, you fool, just hop on over to somewhere like 4chan, but first make sure you have a throwaway browser and a damn good ad blocker installed, and quickly survey the boards. I'm not responsible for what you see or for the therapy you'll need afterwards. You have been warned. Hundreds of people sharing AI-generated porn of every type and kind imaginable and sharing prompts with each other as they all try to refine and coax the algorithms to output a virtual version of the real stuff they can find elsewhere for free. The mind boggles and I need bleach for my brain. If what they are doing doesn't count as confirmation training, I'm not sure what does. And they are simply one sub-faction of the one-handed wanker tribe, which has factions across hundreds of sites and legions more that never share or post online. My point is this. If AI is flawed from the start, from the very data we enter into it, let's scrape the web, shall we? Flawed by our implementation, flawed by poor data labeling, and further flawed and influenced by our interactions with it, why the heck do people even trust it or have the expectation that things will get better? It's a miracle her shirt came out looking like a shirt at all. Hi, this is Paulo Flaherty and I want to thank you for checking out my podcast. 
If you liked this episode, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks again for listening.